Hey everybody, it's Dana Robinson, uh, live Ops Hours, Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And today's guest is Pat Flynn. Pat, thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, Pat, for those that, that don't know, uh, is a uh, you know, pretty amazing person, has a long storied uh, career. I'll let him talk about it in a minute. Um, but also, it's my book week, so uh, shameless self-promotion. Mm -hmm. I sort of hate I hate this part, Pat, the part where you have to keep telling people to buy your book and and the book doesn't get a life unless you do. But uh, everybody, this is book launch week. The book's 99 cents on Kindle. It's free with an audible credit. It's uh, 20 bucks if you want this, this like beautifully bound hardcover that you can give to somebody, maybe a graduate, uh, someone graduating high school this um, this coming spring. And none other than Pat Flynn wrote the foreword to the book, um, which I appreciate immensely. A great endorsement to me from someone that I've admired for a long time. Uh, the book, just use this as a lead into what we're going to talk about today. In the book, I tell a parable about someone who has a really bad job swatting flies. And eventually they, they realize they, that they can do more once they get really good at swatting flies. And their mentor basically says, start looking around for opportunities to learn. You're, you're standing behind the king who's really wise. And then this uh, employee becomes incredibly wise and then uses that as a tool to, to rise up, become an entrepreneur, come back and work in the kingdom. So kind of a, a life of agency that, that you can gain from looking around your job for the skills that you need. And I know you've, you've uh, got your own story that, that I want to tell, and we'll talk about how to use your job uh, as an opportunity to figure out what what can I learn and how can I level up. Uh, but let's start with uh, how you ended up being the path that you are. Well, first of all, thank you again for having me and congratulations on the book. Highly recommend everybody check it out. And I'm just honored to have written the forward for that. And it definitely speaks to a little bit of my path as well. I was on the path to become an architect. Uh, in fact, that's what I went to school for, was on my way to have uh, an incredible career in that space. And then in 2008, I got laid off like many other people did. And I didn't have a plan B. I had done everything the way I was supposed to. Uh, I did go through a little bit of a depression and just trying to figure figure out my life and figure out what was going on. Uh, but I then discovered a podcast and on this podcast uh, called Internet Business Mastery, I listened to a story. And the story was about a guy who had taught how to pass the project management exam online. And that was a big light bulb moment for me. He was making six figures annually by teaching people how to pass an exam online for project managers. And I said, wow, I've taken a number of different tasks uh, in, in my route to become an architect. Uh, maybe there's one in particular that is maybe underutilized or there's not a lot of resources on it. And I honed it on one called the lead exam. I ended up leaning into that and becoming uh, sort of the expert on that. But what was really funny was I didn't really consider myself an expert on it. I just was the person who stepped up and said, hey, I can help you. I've gone through this. It's tough. Here are my notes. Here are the things that you can do to prepare yourself for the exam. Had a very low pass rate, but I was able to help people pass. And that then became a resource for a lot of people in the architecture industry, so much so that in 12 months since I started, uh, I had made over $200,000 by selling a study guide on that website. And it completely changed my life. It completely changed my life because for, for a number of reasons. Yes, financially, it helped rescue me from the doldrums of, of getting laid off. Uh, but it also taught me that, wow, I can I can learn new things rather quickly. Um, you know, I was a little bit uh, apprehensive to dive into the world of entre entrepreneurship because I had spent so many years as an architect and learning architecture. And there's this thing called sunk cost fallacy where you feel like because you've dedicated so much time to this one thing that you have to keep going with it. And I was always fighting against like who... I thought I was supposed to be versus where I thought I should go. But eventually I made that commitment to go all in on entrepreneurship. And since then, I've built several other businesses. I've since bought, uh, created a website called Smart Passive Income that te teaches the things that I've learned and basically just gives away all that information for free. All the things that went well, the things that didn't go well, uh, all the learnings. And um, since then, I've written several books, um, spoken on stages around the world, uh, have sold a few companies. And it's just been an amazing ride. And all along the way, there's these patterns of of learning that happen with each success story. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with the idea of uh, removing the perfectionism, just trying things, mm -hmm. experimenting, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Uh, that's the best and fastest way to get that feedback to be able to then implement the next thing. Um, another thing I've realized, and I've learned this the hard way as well, which is you have to create something to help and serve others. 
Uh, there have been a few times on my business path where, uh, and feel free to stop me anytime because I can keep going yeah, forever. Keep like going. I'm it's just great. taking over your office hours right now. Uh, yeah. I, I'll finish shortly and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll continue. But um, the other thing I've learned, and this is a big lesson, is that what it is that you create online should be there to sell, uh, to help and serve others. Um, selling things can be really scary, but when it's to serve other people and help them through a problem or through uh, a condition or through some sort of pain that they have, um, everybody can win. And, th and that's what I discovered with my architecture website. Uh, but there were moments in my journey where I built things because there was like a money opportunity and that was, mm -hmm. that was the primary motive. All of those failed. I've lost tens of thousands of dollars chasing money. But when I chase helping people, when I chase trying to serve people and transform them, the money is just a byproduct of that. So I've picked up a lot along the way. I have a lot of uh, uh, experience, good and bad, that I can pass forward. So I'm, I'm here to help. Love it. The, uh, you know, I, I, I know you've done a lot of courses and that that's your way of, of giving back. It's also a way to, to learn. Uh, you know, you become an expert as you force yourself to to um, talk about the things that you think, you know, um, mm. the uh, but along the way, I, I feel like you've become an expert in in incremental learning of some kind, you know, that, that you you actually uh, have created enough courses and thought enough about how do I move someone from point A to point B. Um, and, and today I really want to step back and ask the question. How should people approach learning as a tool for their professional uh, advancement? And that, you know, th this is broad enough. You and I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, people who want to go from employee to entrepreneur. But I, I think the principle is probably the same in terms of how you approach learning, whether you want to move up in, in a company or move out and, and do something more like what you and I do. Yeah, I mean, learning and I have an interesting relationship. I used to be a a uh, perpetual starter and a perpetual learner, um, but a person who would learn so much that I used to not really take any action. Um, I think mm -hmm. a lot of us can relate to, you know, back in the day, subscribing to a hundred different websites and waking up in the morning and reading all those things and then not having any more time for anything else, but we're learning. So it feels good and it feels like we're gathering the information that can potentially help us. But information today is, is plentiful. Uh, in fact, we're 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 kind of bloated at this point. There's so much. We're at a buffet, and we just keep filling our plates. Um, and I think that's just an inherent part of who we are as humans. Like we see the thing that could provide for us, and we take and take and take because you know, back in caveman days or whatever, it's like, well, you might not find that bush with berries uh, for another you know several weeks, but here we are on the, on the internet. There's just so much that we could take that we just keep taking and taking. So a lot of it has to do with filtering. In fact and learning how to learn. And, and, mm. and that's really, really important. Um, you know, I like to divide it up into sort of three different stages when trying to accomplish something. First is find, then filter, and then focus. So the three Fs. And within find, there's a few things you need to find. You need to find the why. Like if you don't know the why, it's like driving without a destination. You're going all over the place, you're losing gas or, you know, wasting energy. And at some point you might end up further than where you might ultimately want to be because you didn't think about where your destination ultimately wants to go. And adventuring is fine and, and kind of discovery as you go is okay too. But when it comes to life and learning and career, understanding where you wanna go is really important because where you are now might not actually be able to help you get to that point. And it's better to know that now than, than later. And if it's not in alignment, then we can start to think about things and find things to get in alignment with where we wanna go. Um, finding your spark. So the thing that lights you up, the inspiration and the motivation to get you going and really setting yourself for, up for success and creating trigger habits around those sparks so that you can keep sparking. And of course, when you're trying to, trying to start a fire, the more sparks you have, the more opportunity there is for this, the, the you know, the kindling to kind of uh, take and, and for you to have a fire, uh, a cozy fire to cook on. Um, and then finally, finding what I like to call your champions. These are the other people in your life that can help you and support you along the way and hold you accountable. And this is why I'm so all in on, on SPI, on my website and, and my um, my business now on community, because we found that our students flourish when they are around other people who are doing the same things that they are. So mm -hmm. when you're learning anything, putting yourself in a place, not just where people who have already learned that thing are, although that's great and having mentors and, and, and examples are important, but also putting yourself in a place where there's other people who are in the trenches with you 
and helping each other out. And it's just, you are more likely to, and there's studies and it's, it's science. You're more likely to succeed when there's other people doing the thing with you. Um, yeah. So that, that's the find. The filter, and this really relates to where we are in, in today's world with what I said about the buffet, we have to remove the learning that we don't need right now. And that's a really hard thing to do. I once heard it called uh, just-in-time learning, right? When you know where you mm -hmm. want to go, okay, nothing else matters in terms of intake and input except for the things that relate to the next sort of step on the wow. on the ladder. Um, I love that. And that's such a, a like an obvious thing when you think about it, but it's so hard in this world with with not just like all the things we're subscribed to, but all the things that are almost being force fed to us. Like things are being shown that aren't working in our favor to try to hit, hit our goals because there's so much distraction and so many people are pulling our way. And of course, if your energy is all over the place, it's not focused anywhere. So I like to think about learning as like, let's just let's just learn about the next thing and everything else doesn't really matter. The hard thing about that is we always feel FOMO, right? Like, yeah. oh, but what if that next article is the one that changes my life or that next video or the, the title of that video like is intriguing, I, but it's not about the next thing, but I, I, I wanna watch it save it for later you can use something like notion or uh, evernote or whatever you know i use the tool called um called my mind to to kind of create a, a a repository for the things that i am interested in but no i shouldn't look at right now and the funny that's thing brilliant. About this, that's brilliant yeah the, l let me interrupt because i've been to yeah, mastermind yeah. Where, where i where i think i'm gonna have a panic attack and it's because a lot of the the really well done masterminds just you know they're they're full of smart people and they give you so many tools yeah right. you know so you're scri scribbling down every tool that you're going to need to increase your marketing or or manage your systems and processes and and then you know i actually have had like windows you know tabs <laughs> with everything that i've learned and then what do you do with it and then you lose those because you realize that you don't have any focus and and i love this so what that say again, the tool and how do you approach taking those things that you know you're gonna want to come back to so that you can focus? Yeah, I mean, that helps me move forward with where I need to go because I know I can always go back to those other things later. So I use My Mind, it's an AI app, a uh, browser extension that right. I can save or place anything on the internet that I find that I find interesting. And it puts it in there. I don't even have to categorize it, it does it automatically for me. It actually allows me to then have a search bar to then go and find those things when I need them later, wow. which is really amazing. It, it, the AI, AI is a great tool when you know how to use it in what it is that you're trying to do. Um, yeah. And and today, you know, we're all distracted from all the AI news that's happening every week. So I've tried to reduce the amount of opportunity for that news to come my way, um, and I only follow one or two people in that space to 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 allow that information to come my way. But here's the interesting thing about this. I hardly ever go back and try to find things that I've saved. <laughs> it's mm. it's literally just a mechanism to help me reduce FOMO so I can move on. Like that's it. Love and that's the really funny part about it. I, I hardly ever go back to those things. So it's it's just just a tool you know, to focus. To yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um and, and speaking of focus, focus being the last step, this is where we not just go and say, okay, this is the one thing we're into now. Um, but we go deep into it, right? This allows us to go one inch wide, one mile deep and, and, and like, just get obsessed with the thing and, and like what it is we're trying to do in my world. You know, a lot of people often ask, for example, like, Hey, you know, a lot of people are repurposing content, you know, they're, they're, they're creating a video and then taking the audio and putting it into a podcast and taking that and then putting it into LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all the things. And I'm like, okay, how's it going for you? And they're like, I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> and I can't go like I'm surface level on all these platforms. And I said, well, what would happen if you chose one of those social media platforms, let's say TikTok or Instagram, and you found the experts who knew what they were talking about there, and you experimented there, and you leaned into that, and you did whatever you could to master that one platform, would that, if you did that, work out better than you kind of just being kind of grazing across the surface of, of each of these other ones? And it's obvious. Yes, of course. And I know that we always feel like we have to diversify and diversification is important in many different ways, but I think it was, I can't remember, maybe it was Warren Buffett. I'm not exactly sure. Jim is in the chat and he's a financial wizard, so he might know, but somebody had said, had once said the opposite. Diversification is just scared. It means that you're scared about the investments that you're making. You're not sure 
that what you're doing is putting your money into the things that you have done the research on and and have gone deep on. That just means you're spread out to reduce, yes, any error, but you reduce the risk because, or you you reduce the risk, and because you reduce the risk, you actually reduce the results in many ways because you're not taking those bold risks that can garner those bold results. So you know, going deeper into things and 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 getting obsessed with them and investing into that so it pays you back later into different groups or different learnings. Um, and then the other, the, the last thing I'll say about this, because, you know, there are notes of, of, of another book in this conversation called The One Thing, Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. And it's a great book. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so obvious when you think about it, all great books are so obvious when, when, you know, when you, when you read into it and it's this idea of, well, focus on one thing, because if you focus on that one thing, everything gets your attention and it has a better chance. But I got to say, I've tried literally the one thing and I hate it. I can't do just <laughs> one thing. I ha- I'm can't. an entrepreneur, especially. I have to scratch that itch that's elsewhere. So I've developed this thing called the uh, 20% itch rule. I allow myself 20% of my time to scratch that other itch. One itch, so I'm essentially doing two things. My main thing has 80% of my time, 80% of my energy and effort, and that allows me to make sure that those things are always done. The 20% allows me to play and be creative and try. And if I fail, that's okay because I still am dedicated to the 80% that's still happening. And between 2017 and 2019, my uh, my, my 80-20, my 20% was uh, used to develop a physical product just because I wanted to, because I, I was curious. And so my videographer and I, we created a product called the SwitchPod. It was a tripod for travel vloggers, and it did really well. It launched uh, in... February of 2019, and it generated about a half million dollars in 60 days on Kickstarter, which was amazing. And that was fun. And now that's selling and it's automated now. And I put my business's, uh, you know, knowledge into that to to continue to sell. Recently, my 20% of my time has been put into a YouTube channel about Pokemon, because I got into that with my kids during the pandemic. This channel on YouTube is now blowing up. We're approaching a million subscribers. We'll hit it this year. And I've now since put on events for the Pokemon community with thousands of people who have come across the world to gather in one place with other Pokemon nerds. And now Pokemon International is reaching out to me and wanting to to develop a relationship. And it was because I allowed myself some time to play. But if that were to fail, that would have been okay too. Because there would have been learnings there as well. So that's how I can not go crazy and try all the things, but also not just like feel like I'm pigeonholed into one thing. I love that. Now, now let's t- let's think about the the going deep into learning. So you 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 find, you filter, you focus. Let's take someone who's who's said, I think I want to develop skills in in this thing that might level me up or give me an opportunity to move laterally or or you know lever the skill that I learned to, to make money as a side gig or entrepreneur. Sure. Back to the sunk cost. Like, what's do you have a, a way to to know that? you you're done you you pivot that it was that that you've sunk some time someone goes deep they go a mile deep into something how you know how do you know when it's time for to figure out has that turned into a thing that i can put 80 percent of my time into is it turned into um a, a skill that i can leverage to you know move up professionally or mm-hmm. do something to make money yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a great question. And the truth is, we can think about that all day, but we're never going to know until we actually start taking action, like some sort of action. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I see students who have great ideas and they want to take action, but it's because they're scared or because they don't know. It's like, you're still going to not know until you try it. Like we could, like business plans are just guesses. Like we have mm-hmm. to take, like we have to do this. Part of focus is getting to failure points faster there's a lot of f's in this conversation um if it was gary vanderchuk it'd be a completely different set of f words but uh anyway (laughs) um (laughs) i love the guy uh i try to keep it family friendly though so yeah thanks (laughs) getting to the first failure point is important and i think there's a few things that go along with that giving yourself a deadline to try to get to that first step right and a lot of us have these big giant goals and maybe the maybe the goal is to eventually quit our jobs and try something new and you know start a new venture but before you sort of quit and then start what's beautiful is you can start slowly but we have to start smart right this is the smart and smart passive income and if anybody's trying to start a business i often start with try to get one result for one person who has one problem it's the one 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 
right? And when you do that, you don't have to worry about building a website or investing a ton of money. It's like, let's just see what happens if I try to take this new skill that I've learned because I've listened and because I've, I've, you know, uh, you know, I'm in on these conversations that the king is having, right? Um, and let me just try, let me just see if I can help one person do one thing. And so many things happen when you just narrow it down to that. Number one, it, it helps you find where those people are, right? That's an exercise mm -hmm. in, a, in, in, in and of itself. Where do these people exist? Where, where do they congregate? What communities are they into online and offline? Um, and then how do they talk to each other? What's, what's the vibe here? Um, then connecting with one person is an exercise. How do I reach out to them? What it's like to talk to them? What, what are they, what, how am I getting blown off and why? And, and what is interesting, pe what, what is getting people interested in having a further conversation with me? What are the things I'm saying? You're learning about the language as you go along. When you find somebody who is interested in what you have to offer them, whether you charge them or not, you're, again, you want to get the result. Uh, you're learning. You're learning what it's like to work with those people and what the obstacles and the roadblocks are for them and how to help them uh, through those roadblocks. And again, you don't know what those are until you go through it. And it's a challenge for you just as, as it is a challenge for them. And then eventually you get to that result and they, they have a transformation, a big one or even a small one. But something happened because of you and something that you did to help them. And not only does that unlock, okay, a potential testimonial or something that you can use when you pitch this to somebody else, like, sure, of course, but this unlocks in your brain that there's a chance here that you have done it. No longer can you say this doesn't work or this maybe like, what if this doesn't work? You've already answered that question. That's the biggest question that you need to answer as soon as possible. What if this doesn't work? Well, get to the point where it does in a small scale. You know, and then you take that petri dish that has the formula that seems to work, and then you just like start start putting it everywhere, right? And and that confidence also comes with, especially if you are a heartfelt business owner. It's like you almost feel a responsibility now. It's like, wow, I found the cure for this metaphorical disease or whatever it is uh, for the thing that you're helping. Um, I gotta I gotta help other people. I gotta cure this for everybody. Right. You almost feel responsible. Yeah. And if you have fear get in the way or if you're like, oh, I've never done this before. It's like, are you going to let that get in the way of you curing this disease for people? Whatever. Again, metaphorically, that might be. Um, and, that, and, and, and that gets you going. Right. And then you can start putting the other pieces together. OK, now I'll build a website or start to get, you know, I'll get the Instagram handle for that and you know, start to put those things together that often are people's first decisions. What's, what's my domain and website going to be? Let me get the logo design. Let me spend this money to hire a copywriter. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, shop's open. Let's let's try to find some people. You don't even know if it worked yet, right? So that first sale is so important. Uh, Jim is saying that too. It, it is it is mind-blowingly transformational. And you like you could do it with just reaching out to people and talking to them. Yeah, I love that. Let, let me let me test this concept for the employee. Uh, and and I I think I'm I'm answering it myself, but Take an employee, they say, I think I want to learn something that's going to let me level up. And, and let me tell you right here, everybody, your employer is not very good at telling you what skills to learn. Uh, they, they have the Peter principle, they promote to, to, until the, you know, you're out of your, uh, over your skis, you're not capable. If you want to get ahead at work and, and learn more skills that give you more autonomy, it's on you. Like the, and the same principles that Pat's talking about here is, uh, look around and look for the skill and, uh, you know, find it. And then, you know, amongst those focus on something, uh, you know, once you've filtered and then I think you're still going to have the moment, maybe you're not, not your first sale where you show up and you say to a manager, I've taken some courses, for example, I've, I've been a general manager and someone wants to be an ops manager needs to manage gross margin, for example. Well, mm -hmm take some classes. I, I'm, I don't have the bandwidth to teach it to you. But if you come to me and you say, boss, I, I think I've learned how to, you know, how to run a PL. Can we talk about it? Can you give me some tasks where I can deploy the skills that I think I've learned? I think you can do the same thing and, and test your learnings in the environment of, of even a mm -hmm. job that give you the opportunity to test and prove. And it might prove that you know that, that you're not yet competent it might prove that the skills aren't valuable where you work but the uh it gives you the opportunity to take that that learning that you've taken to some depth and try to deploy that in a work environment where you can continue to extract more skills and get paid for learning on the job right absolutely i mean 
imagine somebody at lower level creating a PL and, and finding, you know, money saving opportunities because the boss is too busy to do that. I mean, that's showing initiative. You're being proactive. You're thinking out of the box and you're helping to save the company money and you make you help your manager look good. Right. That's I mean, you, there, there's again, serving people. How do I how do I make how do I become indisposable? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I have a quick story and this relates to when I was in architecture still and something I learned very fast and, and the sort of force function that I created for myself to do that. A force function is when you sort of create an, uh, create a scenario where you are forced to learn something. And in many cases, that is the fast track to getting to getting somewhere. Uh, so I was flown to Florida to um, be in this giant meeting with the regional director of Hilton. So we were building uh, some properties for Hilton and my project manager, my project manager with it was there. I was just a senior uh, drafter. So I was there to just make sure I understood what was going on so I could put it into CAD and do all that, all that good stuff. So I was, I was there and I, I didn't really have any authority in that room, right? I was, I was sort of the lowest person in the totem pole there. So I'm listening in, in this conversation and then this is at the point at which 3D graphics were starting to become a thing, right? This is, again, I'm dating myself a little bit, but nobody really knew how to create a drawing and turn it into something 3D so we can understand the space a little bit better. And the regional director of Hilton had said, hey, you know what would be really nice if we had one of these new 3D renderings of, of one of our rooms so we can get a really good understanding of what that looks like. And he was like, does anybody here know how to do that? Of course, my elders, my project manager, uh, is an older guy. He's not into that. He's not tech savvy. Um, we look around the room. Nobody say anything. I raised my hand and I said, I could do it. I didn't say I did. I knew how to do it, but I said I could do it. And he said, okay, well, if you can get us a draft of what, uh, you know, one of these hotel rooms looks like in, in a couple weeks uh, in a 3D rendering, you know, we'd love to see that. My project manager's like, what? You know how to do that? It's like, I'll get it to you. Again, never lied, but golly, I was learning everything I could to do 3D rendering. I got the program. I got some time at work to do this and some support, and I was able to do it. And now I became the resource for 3D rendering in my office. I got promoted because of that. Um, and so listening to the kings yeah. and what they needed allowed me to go ahead and do that and, and get a promotion and become more, more valuable. Yeah. So many people think that, that, you know, the they're waiting for that to happen or, the, or they're doing it for promotion alone, but you know what, you own that skill. You could have gone out and become a, you know, the, the outsourced contractor for a lot of architectural firms, once you own that skill. So you got to learn that mm -hmm. skill uh, on the job, uh, go as deep as you wanted to on it, deliver something that, that benefited your employer, but all along you're, you're benefiting you. So that's the, the beauty of learning, isn't it? It's the, it's the capital, the bank we take with us, no matter where we work or what we're doing. Yeah. And then more worldly taking that information you learn, putting your own spin on it, adding your own flavor, and then becoming a unique version of, of something. Cause it's, it's not just the information. It's how you put you into what it is that you've learned and how right. then other people can get inspired by that. And we create this little ripple effect out there. And, and um, you know, that's the difference between just like absorbing and then regurgitating versus absorbing. And it's gotta be a, a good word here that would finish this off really well. I don't know what it is, but you know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the owning the information that you're learning it, it, in a way that enables you to deploy it and teach it is is sort of a, a, the holy grail of, of being able to have something that I would say has high economic value and the value that we all want, which is the ability to deploy our, our highest and best use to own our time, to control our future, to spend time with people that we want to spend time with and live the life that we want to live. Yeah, having that agency over your future through the things that you're learning and then helping others with is is really key. I mean, that's the secret, really. It's what we're teaching our kids right now. Like, you have the agency to do that. At Flynn, we've uh, taken a half an hour of, of people's time. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you as well for co-hosting this with me. 
Uh, we'll hit the comment stream over the next day or two with some resources. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell you, uh, hit Pat Flynn up. Uh, you can just Google Pat Flynn and you'll get all of these search results that will land you on his courses that are free and uh, connect you with his community as well. Pat, thanks for coming on Office Hours. Thanks so much. Cheers.